my wife wanted me to let Sister Howard know that she gonna miss the yum yum. Amen. I said, that's all you got. Uh, she had other, she gonna miss all of you. She told me to make sure you give everybody a hug for me. She had rotator cup surgery on her shoulder and she wanted to come this morning but um, the shoulder was aggravating her this morning. I want to start this message off with a song. Can I do that? Amen. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days and some sleepless nights. But when I I look around and I think things over all of my good days I weigh my bad days I, I won't complain Sometimes the clouds hang low I could hardly see the road I ask the question, Lord, why so much pain? But Lord, you know, you know what's best for me. Though my weary eyes, they cannot see. So I say, thank you, Lord. I, I won't complain. God, you've been good to me. Yes, he has. You, you've been so good to me. More than this old world, or you could ever be. I won't complain I could but I won't Amen I need you to turn your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians the 5th chapter 1 Thessalonians the 5th chapter verse 16 17 and 18 He drives all of my tears away. Turn my midnights in the day. So I'll just say thank you, Lord. I've been lied on, but thank you, Lord. I've been talked about, but thank you, Lord misunderstood but thank you Lord I won't complain hallelujah Thessalonians the fifth chapter verses 16 17 and 18 if you don't mind please stand to your feet the word of God says rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus 
concerning you. I want to talk to y'all just briefly for a little while on the subject, Lord, I won't complain. Lord, I won't complain. Someone once said that great minds discuss great ideals. Average minds discuss events. A small mind discuss people. The church that discuss, uh, the Apostle Paul says the church, uh, talking about the church, the Apostle Paul wrote about what full of small-minded people, the church that was, that he wrote about in Thessalonians was about a church that was full. Full of small-minded people who gossiped about each other and tore one another apart with their tongues. I wonder if we're in a bit like that church today. I wonder if there's other churches in this community that is having a problem with tongue lashing. We're quick to avoid subjects like murder, stealing, and drunkenness in their literal sense. But we often assassinate fellow believers and leave destructions in our path, but the way we use our tongue. Husbands have stabbed their wives with words that are sharp as a dagger. Wife has lashed out with tongues that cut their husband to pieces. Parents have devastated their kids with repeated blasts of venom. Children have exposed their parents with volleys that have leveled the family like a bomb. And churches have been wiped out by wagging tongues that have sliced dice and chop people to shreds. Do we ever think that God may get sick and tired of hearing our negative words? But the Bible says in the tongue there is the power of life and death. So many of us speak words of death, complaining, gossiping, lying, and criticizing our own brothers and sisters. We are going to speak words to life. Look at your neighbor say we're going to speak words of life. And when it comes to words of death, we are going to zip it. Somebody say we're going to zip it. So when people come to you and they want to talk uh, nonsense, they want to talk gossip, they want to talk about things that really doesn't matter to what you need from them, you tell them, I'm, I, I'm not going to talk about that because I shall live and I shall not die. Who am I talking to? So the title of this message that God gave me on this morning, Lord, I won't complain. I would like to ask you a question, my brothers and sisters, this morning. How many of you would say honestly that you complain often? Amen. Y'all real quiet. Would you raise your hand if that's you? I guess I'll go ahead and slip mine up because I have been one of those that complain. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you know that's you too. Amen. They, they're looking at you funny now, but they, 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 know, they know you're right. Amen. But all of us have complained about something one time or another. Somebody woke up this morning out of the bed and they was complaining because the sun wasn't shining. Somebody laid down last night because, you know, they, I mean, they didn't have enough covers on their, on their bed. They was complaining, it's too cold. Look at your neighbor and say, that ain't you, is it? Amen. But all of us 
have had the spirit of complaining. Now some of you at this moment are sitting next to a complainer. Amen. <laughs> who, 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 who did or did not raise their hand. Amen. If you like, if you like to complain about that, go ahead and raise your hand at that moment. You want to complain about the person that didn't raise their hand, you raise your hand because in your spirit you are complaining because they didn't raise their hand and you heard them complain. Y'all ain't talking. I, I, I'm reminded of a lady that was criticized because she went to the grocery store and she wanted a head of lettuce. Somebody said a head of lettuce. She was a single lady and she wanted a head of lettuce so she went to the grocery store owner and she said, can I have at least half of the lettuce? Because I'm a single person. If I just get, uh, get a whole lettuce, half of it's going to spoil. So can I buy uh, at least half of the lettuce? And the people told her, you know, the lettuce ain't but 29 cents a pound. You might as well get the whole lettuce. But she was complaining because they wouldn't sell her a half a lettuce. So, so the, 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 the owner went back and he, he started cutting the lettuce in half and then another lady walked up and said, uh, what are you doing? Why are you cutting half of the lettuce? Why, why don't you sell it you know, for what the price it is? And then the man started saying, well, there's some uh, woman that you can't reason with in the store, she wanted, she wanted a half of a lettuce. And by that time, he raised his eyes up, and that woman uh, showed up at the counter, and he said, and I'm so thankful that you going to get the other half of the lettuce. <laughs> oh, you hear what I'm saying? We are, we are always complaining about something. Look at your neighbor and say, that ain't you, is it? No matter what happens or how negative things may seem to be, we must never stop giving thanks to the Lord, which is the will of God. Amen? Uh, my, my knee, my knee is, is, is aggravating me. It's, it's about to run me crazy because I can't walk like I want to walk, but I won't complain. I'm reminded of of, of, of a story over in the book of Exodus. Moses had just led the children out of Israel. He had let them, let them uh, cross over the Red Sea and they had found themselves in a place called Marah. Marah uh, means bitter. I also remind me of uh, the woman uh, that God blessed her uh, with a new husband but before that she became bitter. I'm talking about uh, Naomi's but, but here they are. God had brought them from one place to another place. And, and they, he brought them to a place called Marah. That's Exodus, the 15th chapter, uh, verses 22. You'll find that story. But, but the people was complaining because Moses had gotten the people all the way out here in the desert. And they didn't have any water. And they just happened to run upon a place that there was some water, but the water uh, was not drinkable. In other words, the water had some type of acid in it. Amen. But, but, but Moses uh, stayed focused. He continued to do what God had called him to do, is to lead the children of Israel uh, out of bondage and, and lead the children of Israel to, to holiness and faithfulness unto God. So, so Moses uh, heard God says, go take a stick. And I need you to get that stick and I need you to lay that stick in that water. That bitter water that, that y'all say that was undrinkable. My brothers and my sisters, there are going to be some things that, that are going to seem to be bitter, but yet it's sweet when God touches it. Because if Moses had not obeyed what God had told him, then the people would have never experienced what sweetness was all about. Moses took a stick that God told him to place it in the water. 
and that stick allowed the water become sweet amen my brothers and my sisters I call my departure bitter sweet uh, it, it's, it, it's bitter because you know it's, it's hard to, to leave something that tastes so good that is so good to me amen somebody in other words, my brothers and sisters, we should never see our, sisters, our situation so bad that we cannot give God thanks. Look at your neighbors and they give God thanks. Because things could be worse. We never can have a reason to complain of God, but rather we can always have much reason to praise and give thanks unto God. Minister, uh, uh, minister, Michael Parker just read out of Psalms 34. It says, oh, bless the Lord. Yes. I will bless the Lord at all times. Yes. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. In other words, uh, Antioch, you got to continue to bless the Lord at all times. Amen. Because there's going to come a time when you're going to need God more than you're going to need man. Amen, somebody. Amen. So 1 Thessalonians 5 and 16 and 18 deals with one's time. It deals with our time. I mean, when you wake up in the morning and you got your clock set at a certain time to wake you up, it's dealing with time. So when you get up in the morning, do you rejoice in the Lord? Do you rejoice evermore? And then uh, he, he, said, he said, pray without ceasing. Amen. Don't, don't, don't let trials and tribulations and, and your complaint department cause you not to praise God at all times. Amen. Because when you stop praising God, it'll lose you to a dark place. Amen, somebody. I'm almost done. But in Romans chapter 1, verse 20, Paul, 21, Paul says, among other things, two main reasons that cause God to give men up to a rep reprobated mind. They are one, knowing God and not acknowledge him as God. Number two, not being thankful or grateful. The people referenced in the above chapter out of Thessalonians, uh, they, in, they, they deliberately chose not to worship God in spirit and in, treat, in truth. So God's love, his mercy, his protection, and his provision directed are all of God's goodness. They, not, they was not thankful for, uh, for the goodness and they was not thankful for the grace. Psalms 34 and 1, David said, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Psalms 106 and 1, David declares, Praise ye the Lord, O give thanks unto the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Psalms 104, David stated, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Amen. It is God's will that we be grateful and thankful to him in every situation. No matter what is going on, God is still in control. Amen. When we think about the children of Israel, no matter what God would do for them, they will always end up complaining. He fed them with food from heaven and even produced water in the wilderness, but yet they still mumbled. One songwriter penned it. He penned it right. I've had some good days. And I had some hills to climb. I had some weary days. And I had some sleepless nights. But when I look around. Amen. 
and I think things over all of my good days outweighed my bad days I won't complain let us have the same mindset because God he has been good to us he's been better than this world could ever be I won't complain I thank you Antioch Missionary Baptist Church for being so good to me and I won't I won't complain I'm reminded of man at the cross at the cross there was two one was complaining and the other one was praising the one that was complaining he was saying if you be who you say you are why don't you just come down from the cross and save yourself and then save us and then the other one uh, that he said Lord will you just remember me that's a form of praise Lord will you remember when I'm going through trials and tribulations ups and downs Lord will you remember me See, God hears our cry. He hears our groan. When you pray to God and it seems like that thing is not going to manifest, God shows up not in your time, but he shows up in his own time. And when he, when he shows up, you can't turn God away. So you got to stay ready for the season. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, there's a time and a season for everything. Antioch, stay ready for the season. And the next person that comes behind me, don't seek a howling. Don't seek somebody that sound good. But seek a pastor that is after God's own heart. Seek someone that will love you and, 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 and say the things that God had instructed them to say. That's my prayer and that's my will. But that thief, he recognized who Jesus was. He recognized that there's another place that is much better than this place. And he asked Jesus a question. He said, Jesus, will you remember me when you come into my Father's kingdom? I want to paraphrase and put me Antioch. Will you remember me? I'm not saying bye-bye. I'm just saying I'll see you later. Let us pray. Oh, gracious Father, we thank you for allowing us to, to turn bitter water into sweet water. We thank you, God, for allowing us to stand on this mountain for a little while. Father, we never thought that this day would ever come because we felt God that this was the place you sent us. Father God, I'm not complaining because I know sometimes you have to move in order to restore. So I ask you now, Father, that the vision of this church, I pray that the people keep the vision of this church. I pray, Father, that this church begin to fast and pray for the next leader of this church. Father, we know that people will flock to this church like flies because they're just seeking a place. But I ask you now, Father, let the church be prayerful and stay prayerful. And Father, I will always pray for Antioch Missionary Baptist Church. So Father, there might be one here today that want to be a part of this ministry, that want to be a part of your kingdom. 
I ask you now, Father, that you save them right now. Even as they sit in their seat. Father, you said in your word in Romans 10 and 9, the road map to salvation, if they just confess with their mouth and believe in their heart that your son Jesus, he died, that we might have the right to the tree of life, then they too shall be saved. Save them right now, Father. And Father, even to the ears that cannot hear, I ask you, Father, allow these words to disturb the atmosphere. Let your, your word whistle in the wind to that lost soul. Bring them back home, Father. And we'll forever give you all the praise. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Amen. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know, I know, I know He holds my future For life is worth the living just Because He lives Because He lives I can fail tomorrow. Oh, yes, I can. Because he lives. All fear is gone. Because I know, I know, I know, I know he holds the future. Life is worth the living just because he lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to say thank you again. Come on, stand to your feet. Get right, church. Get right, church. You better get right. You better get right, church. Get right, church. Get right, church. You better get right, church. You better. You better. Get right, church. Get right, church. Get right. Say this with me, Lord. You said that we are more than conquerors. Lord, we believe that we can and we will do all things, not some things, but all things through Christ who gives us strength. Lord, continue to send your grace, your mercy, your love, your kindness, your joy, your peace, your happiness. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Greet someone in the name of Jesus. Tell the Lord, love you. It ain't nothing you can do about it. Hallelujah. Amen. That's all right, man. Ain't nothing you can do about it. I love you.